Good morning. I've been away uh, in London for a couple of weeks, so you haven't heard from me. Uh, I brought my daughter and we traipsed around some of my old stamping grounds, some of my old pubs like the Flask in Hampstead and the Hollybush nearby up the hill and way down to the Spaniards Inn and a few others like, uh, oh, one in Camden Hill Road off Kensington High Street called the Windsor Castle. Nice old pub. Anyway, here we are back in New York City, the best place in the world to be. It's great to get home always. So I promised that I would uh, show you guys how to deal with Lagrange's equation when we include a dissipation force, a dissipative force. Let's just first look at Lagrange's equation. Now, let's leave this term out. We'll put it in, in a minute. Don't forget, the velocities are the derivatives with respect to time of the generalized coordinates. Very often people denote generalized coordinates with a Q. I just stuck in an X. Now Lagrange's equation really has two parts. A force part and a different one. This usually gives something like this. Not always, but something like this. It's a force term. And this part usually gives something like this. The gradient of, potential, of a potential. So therefore then, in the absence of a dissipative force, the force can be derived from the gradient of a potential. And that's the case when the path, the work done across the path, is independent of whatever path we take. That conservative force field. Now, if there is no, if the path, if the system is not path independent, then we're taking energy in or putting energy out of the system. We have to include a term to account for that. For example, friction might extract energy from the system at a constant rate. An ordinary uh, level surface or even an incline will extract energy from the system at a constant rate. And to account for that, we include what we call Rayleigh's dissipation function, or dissipative function, I don't care which way, what you want to call it. Now, in the case of constant, well, let's look at this first, power is F dot V, all right? Force dot velocity. So, the rate of, okay, take the derivative of power with respect to a velocity and we get a force. We get a force that looks like this, okay, this part here. So to account for, you know, taking energy out of the friction, out with regard to friction, we include Rayleigh's dissipation, dissipation function. Now what does it look like? Well, in the case of an ordinary friction, friction is proportional to the normal and the magnitude, but well, we're only dealing with magnitudes. Now, in the case of an ordinary mass on the surface, the normal is equal to mg. So, Okay, I have a negative sign there, actually. So that would be the friction force. And in the case of uh, this kind of a setup, the Rayleigh dissipation function would be minus mu mgv. That would be the case when friction is proportional. Uh, uh, let's see. <clears throat> When the friction force is just proportional to the normal, we just have the Rayleigh dissipation function of this form. Mu mg x dot, right? So let's do a couple of examples. Now, this is the case when we have a linear situation, ordinary linear friction. Quadratic 
uh, the quadratic case would be a viscous fluid. All right, so let's do the, both of those cases. By the way, I'm on Instagram, Dermot O'Reilly. I'm going to take this off. did this problem before. We did the problem of a mass experiencing friction and free to move down the slope at an angle theta to the horizontal. Now this is going to have two components of weight. which we worked out before. If we choose to put the x-axis this way and the y-axis this way, all right? So that the velocity is x dot. Now, L equals t minus v. Well, it's going to be the kinetic energy of this mass, mass m, minus the potential. Now, the potential is minus mgh, and let's see what h is. Well, h is this side here. That's the h. So that's theta. So h is mg sine theta. Now the normal t minus v, it will give this minus mg h a positive sign. Now we don't need these here again. The normal is going to be mg cosine theta, okay? So that the friction force Now, is that going to be negative? I guess so. Yeah. So, that the friction is mu mg cosine theta. So, therefore, then, so that the friction force taken into account is going to be. friction times the velocity. So this is going to be the form of the Rayleigh function. Let's get rid of this. To include the Rayleigh dissipation function, I add the term which is the derivative of the Rayleigh function with respect to the velocity. So the derivative of the Rayleigh function with respect to velocity is just negative mu mg cosine theta. 
So this one here goes in here. So dl by dx dot is mx dot. And d by dt, dl by dx dot is mx double dot. Now the L by the X, this should have an X in it. I should have written that down. So the L by the X, uh, mg sine theta. So I put into that term Now I'm not so sure, but I think this should probably have a positive sign out. You guys can go away and check that later. Now uh, plus df by the x dot is going to be plus mu mg cos theta, all equals to zero. So we're down to x double dot. To get the equations of motion. Uh, you have to go away and check the signs on that in case I made a mistake. That's the equation of motion, including friction. Hopefully it's the same as the one we got using Newton's law directive. Let's do, do a different problem. Now, this is just linear friction. Let's do quadratic. Now, let's think. What will we do? Um, make up a problem. <clears throat> okay, I have, a, I have one. here, a viscous fluid is going to extract energy from the system. And we have a spring with constant k. So that v is a half kx squared minus uh, mgh, which is going to be a half kx squared minus mgx, where we have x in this direction. Now T is the same as before. Kinetic energy is half n x dot squared. So then, therefore then L equals T minus V, which is uh, M over 2 So that's L equals T minus V. Now we have to have a Rayleigh dissipation function. Well, it's actually going to be 3 pi eta r, where r is the radius of this sphere. Uh, and in the case of uh, viscous fluid, um, We want to end up with a force that's proportional to the velocity. So therefore then, when we take the derivative of this guy here, we're going to get 6 pi eta r x dot, which is proportional to the velocity, which is what we want. 
I'm going to replace all these terms. They're a constant, so we don't need that. We'll just call it lambda x dot squared for our problem. <coughs> So we write our Lagrange's equation, which will include now the derivative of the Rayleigh dissipation function, which is this guy here. So we get mx double dot minus dl by dx, this part here, minus Now, the derivative of dx of this guy here with respect to x dot is going to be 2 lambda x dot. And that whole thing is equal to 0. Let's just remove the brackets. And we get the... Okay, let's simplify it further. This should have a, uh, no, I guess I, have, I, I, I can't do that. Now this is a standard equation that has uh, solution that you guys can go and look up. It's an equation of the form of this. And that is damped harmonic motion. It will have a form of solution that's going to look like this. Equation of damped harmonic motion uh, decreases in amplitude but has a regular period. All right? You can solve that some other time. That's okay for today. Just remember what we do now. We want to include uh, dissipative forces. We have to add in the Rayleigh dissipation function. I gave you two, a linear case and a quadratic case. Uh, in the case of a viscous fluid, uh, the uh, dissipative force is proportional to the velocity. In the case of an ordinary surface and mass, whether it's inclined or flat surface, the friction force is a constant, right? So in one case you're taking energy out of the system at a constant rate, and at the other you're varying the rate because of the damping. Okay, that's enough for today on that. <laughs>